leaving Carnforth and around about four miles to Tewitfield and the terminus of the Lancaster Canal. Not long had some quite torrential rain and it cleared up and the sun came out. According to the Met Office weather app, it's supposed to be hammering it down right now. And when I set off just three minutes ago, it looked like that was unlikely. But now I'm not so sure. If it does start raining heavily, I'm either going to have to stop filming or pull over and sit it out. That's assuming I can find a mooring that quickly. Bridge 128 there and the canal for its remainder now becomes very rural indeed and very twisty and also in places very narrow and shallow I think it's safe to say that the Lancaster Canal has taken the longest to cover out of all the waterways that I've travelled. I crossed the Ribble Link and arrived on the Lancaster back in May 2019. And here we are, May 2021. 13 months of that was restrictions and the rest was continual hard work putting Travels by Narrowboat onto Amazon Prime. So it's been an eventful couple of years. Part of which I never want to repeat. No prizes for guessing which part that is. The A601M crosses the canal. The very edge of Cumbria there and just about to pass under the M6 motorway. The very motorway which cut a swathe through the Lancaster Canal all those years ago and severing the final 15 miles or so 
to Kendall of the Lancaster Canal. What I find confusing is they went through all the time and trouble of building that bridge there over the canal and putting a footpath through, yet a mile up the canal they just gave up. As is very common on the canals, all it takes is a bridge or a tunnel and the landscape completely changes. Bridge 130, Kellett Lane Bridge, and now about two miles to Tewitfield. More ominous black clouds. Signs of precipitation over there. Starting to get a few spits and spots. So I think I'm gonna put my waterproofs on. Might be okay, but be prepared and all that. They like their reed beds up here. And they're always on blind bends. There's no shortage of potential mooring spots along here. The main thing is whether I can get to the edge. Cappen Ray Bridge, which signifies just over a mile to Chewetfield. And at Cappen Ray Bridge is the very understated Keir Aqueduct. superb fishing spot.
The rain is trying its best to make its presence known, but could the sunshine win the battle? Also at Cap and Ray, and coming up very soon, is the Cap and Ray Arm, which once served a now disused quarry, and now features some floating pontoon visitor moorings. And as long as there's moorings available, I'll stop in there and take a walk through the woods, as there's supposed to be a very impressive railway bridge, and the woods are also supposed to be haunted. <laughs> Here is the arm. And no. Ah, oh, well, there you go. Would have been nice, but uh, not to worry. Now a mile to Chewitfield. Definitely brightening up. So fingers crossed. You don't have to have a narrow boat in order to enjoy the canals. This weather's a turn up for the books. We've been blessed, I think. This year's runner up in the Lancashire rock laying competition. it filled is quite literally just a few bends away. I think if ever the uh, term picture postcard applied to anything, this is probably the shot. I think that'll be the thumbnail. This last half a mile or so has been staggering. 
just a shame that it comes to an abrupt end at Tewitfield. If it carried on to Kendall, it would be making its way through some of the most stunning scenery on the canals, through the Lake District of all places. Wow, what have we got coming along here? Oh my god, I'm going to have to concentrate here. I need to get out of the way. And quick. Don't take it the wrong way, but this is not the place for wide-beamed boats. I mean, you have to consider this is a V-bottomed canal. And it's in fact very, very shallow. Not long now at all. In fact, just after this bend. And the last bridge before Tewitfield and the end of the Lancaster Canal. Well, this is Tewitfield. And two years after joining the Lancaster, I have finally arrived. The M6 noisily rejoins the canal. And this is it, the very, very end at Chewett Field Services. In the past, the canal continued straight on ahead. But that's it for now. Maybe one day they'll open it again. I made it, and despite the incredible noise of the M6 motorway, I'm actually going to stay here tonight because, well, it's a mooring I can actually get near the edge, and uh, I've waited to get to this point for so long, I might as well appreciate it to its fullest. I'm going to have a quick cup of tea. And then I'll take a stroll over the other side of this road here and have a look at the old part of the canal and its locks. Well, I just opened the uh, front door to go out and take a look along the canal, the old canal, and there's these two pies and a letter on the front deck. It says, hello, Kevin. Made it at last. Welcome to Lancashire. Steak and cheese. Round one is chicken, ham and leek. From Cy the Pie. Well, I never. <laughs> but no sign of Cy. That is absolutely incredible. Cy, thank you very much. Well, that's my dinner sorted. 
and I'm going to bung these straight in the oven. I'd say a sort of medium-ish oven, gas mark 5, about 160-ish, for I'll say 35 minutes and then I'll have a look to see how they're doing. Wow, I can't wait. Right, so while they're doing, let's go and have a look at part of the old northern reaches of the Lancaster Canal. Maniac! 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 And the old section of the canal starts right here. Still in water. Well, it's not beyond the stretch of imagination that you could quite simply bore a tunnel through there. And if that was the case, it would then be another stretch of the imagination that these locks could be restored. The basic infrastructure is still there. And this water is still feeding the open section of the Lancaster. Well, there's my country house gent three point plan for reopening the northern reaches of the Lancaster Canal, all the way to Kendall. Just bore a tunnel through that flyover back there, reinstall some new lock gates all the way up the flight, and then build an aqueduct over the M6 motorway. Easy. In fact, I'll go and get my mile-long extension lead and get started right now. Well, they've had about 45 minutes and I think they're ready. So let's get them out, eh? Well, we have here chicken, ham and leek. That's the round one. And steak and cheese. And they're certainly running, running. One thing I noticed as soon as I got them out of the oven was the incredible smell of cheese from the uh, steak and cheese. So let's take a look at this. Wow, it, it's full. It looks like well, it's steak and mushroom. And of course cheese. Very hot. Mmm. I'm not sure what the cheese is, but it's um, it's quite a strong one. I'm assuming some sort of blue cheese, like a Stilton, that kind of thing. Mmm. Right, let's try the chicken, ham, and what was it? Leek. The flavour, yeah, it's perfect. It's like it's not thin ham, it's chunks of ham, almost like gammon. The only mystery that remains is who is side the pie? I did go on Google and and googled Cy the Pie, got Lancashire and Cy the Pie Chewitville, thinking it might be a local business, a pie guy, 
who makes pies for local shops and pubs and restaurants and so on. All I could find, the only thing that popped up was Cy King, one of the hairy bikers. And they do happen to be filming in and around Lancashire for a new series. So, could Cy the Pie be Cy King, one of the hairy bikers? I do have some high profile viewers. One that springs to mind is uh, the producer, or one of the producers, of Breaking Bad. And he has watched the entire series on Amazon Prime. Mm. Well, hopefully the mysterious pie man will reveal himself in the comments for this video. Well that's it for the Lancaster Canal, if you can still hear me. <laughs> but keep an eye out for an extra video where I'll be going along the Glasson branch, down the locks to Glasson Dock itself. But in the meantime, look after yourselves and I'll see you again. Cheers for now. <laughs>